Hello, everyone. I'm Stuart Fishman. This is the Web Yeshiva. And this is our last meeting of the for this month. Now we're going to our, a little summer vacation. My wife says, need a vacation. And we'll meet again in El Obli Nether. So I'll just share. So these courses were called Why We Do What We Do. Let's put my glasses back. Why do we do what we do? And we talked about breaking glasses at weddings, spoke about eating chalant on Shabbos, and these are all customs. A lot of things that we do, we do because the Torah says we have to do them. And so I don't ask why we have, why we do, because the answer to why is simple. Hashem said so. Uh, Hashem said so, and we interpret the Torah in Tarsha Bal Peh. Don't, I don't know. I don't, I, we don't light a we don't turn on the we don't light a fire on Shabbat. We don't even turn on electricity on Shabbat because the Torah can be applied. There's some things that there's no real reason, and that based on the classic halacha, what we do, why we do, and those are the customs. Like I even look at the web page, like halacha is like. So to speak, level top down. Hashem says to do. Chazal and Chazal interpret the Torah. It's Torah Shabbat Peh. Customs rise up from the people. Customs are saying that the people come up with an idea. Let's do this, or let's not do that. And we break. Let's break a glass at the wedding. They can get to the wise. You trace it back to the Gemara. But it's what people want to do. And when you see what's the role halacha relates to custom. And it starts with a pasuk in Mishle. Now, this is a very famous pasuk. The Ramban opened up his famous letter to his son. Shma b'ni musar avicha v'altitosh tarati mecha. And musar, her ethical teachings, that's what in Yeshiva called musar. Whether it's the Mesilat Sharim whether it's Shari Chuha or Rabbeinu Yona, it's called Musar. But Chazal understand the Pasuk in a different sense. And Rashi already in his parish to Mishle, Shema Medi Musar Avicha, Vati Tosh Tarati Mecha, Shema Medi Musar Avicha, Rashi Natan HaKadosh Baruch Hu Moshe Bechotav Alpeh. That's Musar Avicha. Hashem gave Moshe Rabbeinu the Torah Shabbat Tav and Torah Shabbat Peh, and Huzi Mecha, Knesset Yisrael, the Jewish people, the body of the Jewish people. Divrei Sof, Mishchit Shavasiv Asus Yagim Torah. Chazal made up fences around the Torah. Muktza. We don't, ta- we don't handle, whatever well, we'll you want to define Muktza. Simply, uh, I find a pen in the street and I want to keep the pen. I can't touch, I can't move the pen. A pen is mukta. that's a siyah. Hashem made up rules for Shabbat, the things that we don't do. That's a siyah. And today we're going to talk about some other siyagim of these fences. And it starts with the Gemara in Masechet Pesachim, which appropriately enough, It's called Makam Shinagu, customs. This is the Gemara that talks about customs as a matter of law. Makam Shinagu Lasab Malacha Barmi Pesachamat Fatsot Osin. Makam Shinagu Shlosa Ain Osin. And the day, Erev Pesach, and the times of Beit HaMikdash, after Chatzot Yam, people were expected to be bringing their Korban Pesach. In the morning, the Quran Pesach is part Bain Harbain. So 10 o'clock in the morning, your house is clean, you did your Bitikat Chameitz, you're on the road to Yushalayim, or maybe you're there already, and you want to you, you get a haircut, or you have a barber shop, you want to do haircuts. Is this permitted? Look at Rashi. Okay, look at Rashi. 
Pesach, we have to get ready. There's a lot to get done on Pesach. Get ready for the Seder, get all your things ready. If you're going to open up your barber shop on Erev Pesach in the morning, you know, you might let things slide. So it was considered in some places a good idea. Don't open up your store, or don't do malach on Erev Pesach that's not related to the Korban Pesach. You can get ready for Pesach. Ain't no sin. Okay? Oh, sin. That's customs. Some people thought this would be a good idea. No business on Erev Pesach. Other people thought, it's okay. We, we got our hand on things. We know what's going on. We can open up our shops and still be ready for Pesach by, by sunset. Some people went to work. Some people didn't go to work. However, the Mishnah goes on. Oh, I hate when this happens. Excuse me. Oh, me makam she osin, makam she ain't osin, makam she ain't osin, makam she osin. No, it's not chumay makam she yatsmi sham, chumay makam she halach l'sham. That's it. This Chazal view min hagam like this, and the big word here is origin or place. I like a different color. There we go. If you come from a place where people do work on Yunt, on an Erev Pesach, and you go to a town where nobody's working, or if you came from a town where no one does work, and you go to a place where they do open up their shops, you get you get it both ways. If I work in my hometown and I go to another town near Pesach where no one's working, I can't I can't go to, I can't work. I have to respect the local custom. And on the other hand, if I come to a place where nobody works and I go to a place where people do work, I take my I take my custom with me. Okay. Both ways. Both ways. Why? And the Gemara makes a very important point. The Mishnah makes the point. We want to avoid machloket. Customs are important. And if my custom is permits me to work under a Pesach, I say, well, as a matter of principle, I'm entitled to work. No. What's even more important is to avoid machloket. And if I would work in a town when nobody's working, that's going to create discord. That is the Mishnah. And now we come to a famous story. A story that I should say is it's famous in the halachic literature about customs. B'nai Baisham. Once upon a time, there was a Jewish community in a place called Baisham. I'm always there custom. Sar and Sidon, we still know where they are. Their cities on the coast of Lebanon. Sar is Tyre and Sidon is still called Sidon. And the good people of Baisham had a custom that they wouldn't sail from Sar and Sidon in Erev Shabbos. You know, things can happen. The boat might sink. I don't know. I mean, all sorts of things could happen. They were very much afraid that they wouldn't get a back home for Shabbos. So they wouldn't go. Mitzor Sidon and Rashi explained. Yamshuk shall see them bear Shabbos. It's a lovely idea. Sor and Sidon were places of commerce. And it would be a very good thing if I had some sort of retail business to go to the market of Sidon when it's open on Fridays. But the Jews of Baishan would never do this. 
was they were afraid that something might happen and they won't be able to prepare for Shabbos properly. So they never went. They would never miss the market. Then what happens? So the descendants of these original people of Baishan, they went to Rabbi Yochanan, who was the great authority in Eretz Yisrael in his time. Amulo, Avasa Nefshalu, Anan Lo Efshalam. Our ancestors could afford to pass on the market day and seed on and not go there on Erev Shabbos. But we can't. We can't afford it. We, it's hard to make a living. We need to go there. Avas and Efshalu, Anan Lo Efshalam. They could, we can't. And it's a minute. Can we get out of a minhag? Amaluhu, for a kiblu vasechem alehem. Your ancestors accepted this stringency upon themselves, and you can't get at it. There's not, you, you must obey it. Why? Based on the pasuk. Shma b'ni musar avicha v'altitosh tarati mecha. As Rashi explained it, there's musar avicha, that's Torah. And straight Torah Shibachtav, Torah there's really nothing wrong with traveling for your business Friday morning. But there's Torati Mecha. Those are the customs. So Prophet Rashi calls the Siagim. They had a legitimate concern. They had a legitimate concern. Maybe we won't get back home in time for Shabbos. And lots of times, you know, happens to everyone. You get back home for Shabbos, and you're happy that you get back five minutes before the cut they wrote. There are traffic jams. Things happen. I mean, you're happy that you got back before Shabbos started. Forget about getting ready for Shabbos. I'm happy they just they always managed to get into the door, light two candles, and sit down. These things happen, and their concern was legitimate. Customs are binding. And that's halacha. You cannot. You may not avoid, you may not get out of this very worthy custom of your ancestors. And that's the Psak and Shulchan Aruch about customs. This is in Yoridan Hilchos Nedarim. Okay? Because again, it's not, it's not in Hilcha. It's a, why, how do I create, this is last week's Parsha. How do I create a new mitzvah? Be it a positive thing to do or a negative thing to do, it's a nether. Nether includes, or I will not. Nether includes also, I will. It's a nether. And that's going to be very important. I was in Durham, or I can create a Nisr Torah. I can make a nether. I'd formulate it properly. I won't, I don't know, I think it's like a bad, I won't smoke. Smoking is bad. The person shouldn't smoke. I'll stop smoking. It's a nether, because it's a mitzvah not to smoke. And even if it's not a mitzvah, I can make a nether. I won't eat, I will, all, I can make a nether. I won't eat pineapple. There's really no reason not to eat pineapple. I make a nether. Pineapple is usser to me. Now it's usser, I mean, the Torah to me to eat pineapple, just like it's usser for me to eat pork. Because a nether is an isser Torah that I just created. This is the Shulchan Aruch. Varma mutarim v'yadom shem mutarim. Nagobem isser. Things that are mutter. And you know they're mutter. But you've adopted... Uh, practice not to do it because this will be your personal siyag to obey the Torah. You can't mat the neder. Normally, if you make a neder that's inconvenient, you go to the rav with two other people and make three people together, you can mat their neder. We do that Erev Rosh Hashanah collectively, Haparis Nedari. But this particular neder, these people from Baisha went to Rabbi Yochanan. We need to go to the market in Sidon. 
Our parents could afford to miss up on the market. We can't afford it. Please, matter the neder. Rabbi Yochanan said no, because this neder is a siyav, hilkach. And there's other examples in the Shulchan Aruch. A lot of people have a menek to fast there of Rosh Hashanah. During Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, on the days of Rosh Hashanah, you make tshuva. Now, Ashkenazim, we have a menek, we'll see this in Aruch Hashanah, we don't eat meat during the nine days. The Shulchan Aruch says, it's only your pseudonym of sec if you don't eat meat. But Ashkenazi Jews expanded on it. That's your minna. What's well, the about Malchus and Rubari? And let's say you're sick, okay? Otherwise, you're not going to mite their nether because it's a nice custom. If a person is sick and he accepted this privately, because Machaber is not an Ashkenazi, so he knows individuals who didn't eat meat but, or during the nine days. So, Gimel Shatiru you have to do a Taras Nidarim. And he gives good advice. I don't know. There's, you don't want to, uh, during the three weeks, I won't eat meat. The Medin and Shachan Aruch is Sudam of Sekes, Ashkenazi Lacha is nine days. I I feel Zechel of Horban, I will not eat meat during the three weeks. What you have to do before you accept that practice is what you say, Bli Neder. Sir, okay. On your Mara Batilas, I'm going to say, Makal of Neder. That's the idea of saying, Bli Neder. I say, Bli Neder. Now, you don't have to, if you promise to meet your friend for coffee, that's not a Neder. So you don't have to say, I'll meet you for coffee tomorrow, Bli Neder. I've heard people speak like that. It's really, that's not a Neder. But if you're going to say, I'm going to start going to Blatav Yomi, which is really a wonderful thing to do. You have to say Belin Neder, because otherwise you've accepted it upon yourself to do a mitzvah. And that's a Neder. So say Belin Neder. You say, I don't want to make this permanent. The Mahabra has like double. Say Belin Neder and emphasize this is not permanent. And he goes on. That's the story of Baisha. If a community accepts a, a certain practice, it's binding upon them, it's binding upon their descendants. So, it's not, and even if the community didn't like have a meeting, took a vote, let's all, like in Baishan, let's all stop going on business trips on Fridays. That's a meeting, they took a vote. Even if the whole community just, they all drifted into this practice. If it's a Geder of Siyag Torah, it's a Neder. And if a person would move to Baishan, and this person used to go on his business trips Friday morning, once he gets to Baishan, he can't. That's the Mishnah. You go to Makam Shanagu Shalalasot, you can't. That's that. Neder, a minog is a binding neder. Okay? And the, the, uh, some sofer takes this, he took this very, very seriously. Any questions? Any questions? No, thank, thank you. you. No if um, if a neder, um, if it's like if a person is visiting a community just for like a few days, or we have to keep. You have to do what it? they do. Do what they do. Yes, do okay. what they do. If a Sephardi would come to Frat on Pesach, I mean, okay, then now I say cities are larger, but the old days, in the old days, okay. If my father, fa- if my father. All of a shalom who was in Poland, but somehow made it to Morocco in 1930. He was Makam Shiat Samisham. He couldn't, if he was invited, he could eat kidney up. But say a Moroccan would made it to my father's town in 1930, Dombrovska, with a whole bag of rice. He couldn't eat the rice in Dornov- and Dombrova Tarnovska. That's the whole point. Yeah, you, 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 that's the Mishnah and Pesachim. 
the whole the big 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 value is you go back to the page are you shot of them near my focus don't deviate from local practice because it makes my focus you're there so, you uh, do hello? what they're doing I have another question yes um so so but if you go to a community where they don't do the practice but you come you know your parents did it because I'm thinking about the um you know eating you know like Ashkenazim don't eat kid meals but are you still bound to do it right it doesn't you can't get out of it by moving can you that's it so we're not going to talk about that but in theory let's say I was an Ashkenazi I would move to Beit Shan permanently imagine Beit Shan is a Sephardi community I could eat kidney oat but on the other hand I'd have to get up every morning in Rechot shell to say Slichot I have to accept their chumras. I have to say slichot every day. I have to get up early every day in El. Okay. Because again, it's the ayis shana de mikneh machloket. Don't make machloket. Okay. okay. All right. So back to the Chetam Sofer took Menach very, very seriously. Very, very seriously. Takes this idea of neder very, very seriously. He had a question. Someone asked him a question. Okay. Chalavakum is Asr, okay? People, he says, People are very makma and chalavakum. Jew doesn't watch milking. They won't drink the milk. However, they think it's Pashat Mutter. If they have a goy, if a goy puts milk, I'm now again the whole question of eating milk making milchic bread. If a guy makes milchic bread, they eat milchic bread. They say the milk is the milk, but now it's bread. It's mutter. He is very upset with this. And what he says is like this. Okay? I think that when we say minag is a neder, it's mamash the iser deraisa. Because even though by certain speko, the chalavakum, I'll say to suffix the rabbanin. Okay? It's not like pork. Pork is an iser Torah. Any doubt about pork is also because suffix Torah lechumra. A doubt about chalavakum would be a, a doubt about the rabbanin iser. Yes. But nevertheless, to totally go against it, I'm going to drink chal of akum. As far as he's concerned, putting chal of akum in bread is just as bad. We did an Isser Torah. But love is over neder daraisa. Things that are customs have a din Torah, which is quite, quite remarkable. And the Aruch HaShulchan agrees with him. And he's talking about the three nine days. Not all of the halachos of Avelos, of course, are, are Durabanan. And the Gemara says, I don't eat meat only on Erev Tishabah, Sudam of Seke. But the Ramah and Calling earlier, Ashkenazi thoroughly so. There are certain things we start from Rosh Chodesh of. No wine and no meat during the nine days. Some people don't eat meat from starting on Shiva Sabbath Tammuz. And the Sephardim say it starts Shiva Shachalba. But Ashkenazim accept the Ramah. We accept the Psaq of the Ramah. The Ramah says from Rosh Chodesh Av, Rosh Chodesh Av. Now he goes on. Now things are bad. We're doing a Veros. Okay? Mizalzim Isr Zeb. Many people are just ignoring this Isr. But Shem Ovim Isr Darais Mitam Neder. The Rav HaShulchan says to eat meat during the nine days from Ashkenazi is an Iser Torah. It's a neder. It's a neder. It's a neder of Klai Yisrael. 
It's a nether of Klai Yisrael. Min hagim for the for the Shatnam Sofer, min hagim for the Rosh Hashulchan, are asam in because they're nether. They're in the category of a nether. It's something that all the Ashkenazi Jews accepted. It's like we made a nether. Meat is forbidden to us during the nine days. That is their view. That leads to a problem because there's another Gemara. And it's a Gemara about how long we wait between eating meat and milk. And the, the, it goes like this. How much time do you have to wait between eating meat and cheese? I'm going to leave a little clue. Rabbi Yochum said, you don't have to wait at all. He says, is that so? Rabbi said, you ate meat, you can't eat cheese. You eat cheese, you can eat meat. So it couldn't be, it couldn't be what Rabbi Yochanan said. So it must be, so it must be, Rabbi how long do you have to wait between eating cheese and eating meat? I'm going to leave a low clue. That is no time. Ufa. Rav Chista said, you ate meat, you can't eat cheese. You ate cheese, you can eat meat. Now, okay, let's say you ate meat and you didn't floss. So there's meat between your teeth. Does that count as meat? Yeah. So a few weeks ago, we had this in Kriyata Torah. The the Ami saw we ate the slav and the Shem sent a plague of Basar Demish and with the most particular teeth is called Basar. So you have to wait. How long do you have to wait after eating meat? Ufa said, when it comes to waiting after eating meat, I'm vinegar compared to my father who was wine. My father would eat meat today. He would not eat any cheese until tomorrow. At hash, they'd wait 24 hours. Iluana, but comes to me, basudasa hudo achilna. Sudachrina achilna. You know what? Because mina Torah, what's us, sir? Mina Torah is to cook meat and meat, milk and meat together. So if I would make a cheeseburger on the grill, first to be, it's us, mina Torah, to cook it. And if I would eat it, I'm doing the Yisitara of Basar Bachalov. But let's say I have a hamburger, and next to me there's ice cream for dessert. I eat my hamburger, and I eat ice cream for dessert. I didn't do the Yisitara. Because they're not, I didn't cook them together. Waiting between became a custom. It's not the Torah. And there's no specific Gemara that says how long you have to wait. They can't even call it a din de Rabbanin. But you see, Rav Asi asked Rabbi Yochanan how long to wait. So there's never like a formal decree. So Marukva's father would wait a whole day. And Marukva himself wouldn't have meat, wouldn't have ice cream for dessert when he had a hamburger. But Lusuda Sacharina Chilma, but my next meal. What does that mean? My next meal, I would have cheese. And now we see Toso. What does it mean by the next meal? Suda Harina. Love to does such regin la sauce, achas, shachas, achas harvest. No, it doesn't mean, well, you had meat and your morning meal, and he'd wait, and then he's talking about he won't have any milk until his evening meal. No, 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 no. You don't wait that long. Afilula alter. No, you can have milk after meat immediately. Clear off the table. Make sure there are no meat crumbs that might get mixed up with the milk residue. You say, cut the so the meal is over. You go on to low polygrabanin. Because I look in, we look in the Gemara. There is no other distinction made. All the all we know is Mar Ukva. He waited until the next meal. And the next meal might be 
in, in 10 minutes, might be in an hour. Nothing defined, there's nothing defined. That's the Ashkenazi Psak. That's Tosfot. But there's, a, and there's a Rambam. Misha'achal basar v'tchila b'in basar b'hema b'in basar of v'chachav chalav shia v'erish v'erkei shir sudacheres. You had meat, whether it's beef, whether it's poultry, no milk, they wait for the time of the next meal, which is sheish sha'ot, six hours. Misha'achal basar v'tchila b'in basar b'hema b'in basar of v'erkei shir sudacheres. Because we know you can eat cheese and then eat meat. Because the Gemara says you can rinse out your mouth, eat a cracker, or clean the meaty, the dairy residue out. Rambam says the reason you have to wait six hours is because meat leaves a residue, and it's hard to get rid of. So you wait six hours. And both ideas are how to interpret a custom. And that's what we see in Shulchan Aruch which I didn't open, so I'm going to open it now. Where is my Shulchan Aruch, Yeridea? Here we are. It's a, it's a Halachan Shulchan Aruch. Achal Basar, you had me. Lo yachal bin achar tzad shei sha'ot. You had me, no cheese, you wait six hours, b'chaber, Follows the Rambam. And if you have to wait six hours, if there's teeth, meat between your teeth, you got to floss because you can't have any meat in your mouth when you're eating dairy. Okay? Now, toast, now the Ramah, who was Ashkenazi, he holds like Tosfo. Yesh Omrim, there are those who said, and Tehom Din Shesh, I don't have to wait six hours, but Miyadim said, Kabrech Bekasamazam, and then he could have a dacha. Clear off the table, say, Perkasamazam, rinse out your mouth, you're good. But Mina Kapash Min Nazel Omdin Achal Chazbaz Asha Achas. And the Ramah says, you know what? Here in Poland, the Mina gets to wait one hour. So the, these are Min Hagim. These are min hagim. Some say six hours, some say one hour. Um, I understand that Dutch Jews still wait. I know there, there's a Dutch man in my shul, waits one hour. I don't know if there are much left after the Shoah of, of Dutch Jewry, if there'd be a community of Dutch Jews they could move to so I could get the one hour cooler. I don't know if, if they're there anymore. I mean, there are Jews in Amsterdam. I don't know if they keep the one hour. So that's customs. But the big question is how could Mar Ukva son not keep the minig of his father? To what to wait between meat and milk, I would call a siag. I don't want to come to eat meat and milk together. So I'm gonna wait. Right? I wait. And how come Mar Ukva didn't keep the minig of his father? His father's minig was a siag. B'nai Baishan had to keep the siag of their ancestors not to travel on Friday mornings. How could Mar Ukva avoid or, yeah, or evade, whatever you want to call it, the, the minig of his father? He says, he says, he, he knows I'm not as good as my father. My father was wine and I'm vinegar. But why? How? But how could he get out of keeping that minhag? That's a very, very big question. And it was asked by a few people. And we'll see a couple of answers. One is the Chavos Yair. The Chavos Yair was a Rav in Germany, in the, the great communities, Mainz and Worms and the great Posik in Germany in the 17th century. And he, asked, he was asked about Min Hagen. I'm just going to move this. Okay. He shall be me about Torah. Any questions? Not Hello? Yet. No, oh, that's no. how, can, how can Mark Ufer get out keeping his father's Min hug? That's the big question. 
There was a man whose father who fasted every Monday and Thursday. Do I have to keep this? Especially on the 10th day of Adar, his father had a great nace and he gives out tzedakah on the 10th day of Adar. And he would fast on the tenth day of Adar. Do I have to observe that? Just like Nei Baishan had to observe the Chumrah of their fathers. I wrote them actually a long answer, but for this tshuva I'm printing like the brief answer. Okay, Nei Baishan. It's not just that he even made a neder formally. It's not sure how it's like a neder. Just the fact that they adopted this practice as a good as a good thing to do, or a good thing not to do, not to travel Friday morning. So it's a neder, and it's brought down in Shulchan Aruch. A good practice is a neder. Rock the muta lena dakek was We need to study this. We really need to see, is that what's really happening? Every time you look, sometimes there's a father who's a great tzaddik who has all sorts of chumras, and their children don't follow these chumras. They just don't. They don't. Um... I grew, I grew up in New York, where I grew up originally as a child, people who kept Rabbeinu Tamshav, 72 minutes after Shkia. And that's all I knew from. I moved to Washington Heights to the German community. They don't wait 72 minutes. Here in Eretz Yisrael, very few people wait 72 minutes. I'm not keeping the minute of my father. Why not? Even though that's to hold like Rabbeinu Tam, 72 minutes is a basis for it. Some people go to Mick for every day. The men are going to Mick for every day. Do the children have to go to Mick for every day? So don't think that, okay, there's a difference between a personal chumrah, like the father goes to Mick for every day, as, a, as opposed to a community thing. Okay? And also, Shema B'ni Musar is in the singular. Right? So it doesn't say Shema B'ni Musar Avotecha. Apparently, it's addressed to individuals. It goes on. Well, they go like, no, the Fizei Yishchum Avon B'nei 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 but if he was never mater neder, the son has to adopt the head, this neder by inheritance. And he thinks that's, that's an unacceptable paradox. He has another question. How can I impart something in general as a neder to people who aren't even born yet? Like by what mechanism does this work? This neder idea, and it's in Shulchan Aruch, and it's in the Gemara about Bnei Baisham. By what mechanism does the minna get handed down? So the Chavetz has an idea. First of all, he thinks I don't think it's a din The fact that they base it a pasuk is an asmachta. It's, a, it's an idea that you find in Pesukim. They could have put in another Pesuk if they wanted a Pesuk from the Torah. And so it's Durabanan. Now, why can't you matter the Neder? The Neder that's binding, the minute that's binding is a community. The community adopted a practice and they're all living together in that location, Shamakam Goreng. If you're in the place where this is the practice, that practice is obligatory. That's why Bnei Baishan 
they Baishan, as long as they were living in Baishan, had to follow the ancient practices of their fathers and mothers who lived in Baishan and never traveled in Arab shops. But that's what I mean, Hagen. As a rule, Jewish communities, until there were mass expulsions, stayed put. They stayed put. And so those, that's why those, their customs were obligatory. Mm-hmm. And now, as a rule, people get married, people from other communities. And he goes on, and because Saint Kedosha, where he lives in Vermeiza, Vermeiza was destroyed in the Crusades, and there were slifos that were written were on Kinos and Tisha B'Av, we still say some of them, Ashkenazim, that they, they made certain decrees about Taniyot on days of their massacres during the Crusades. And, but they still keep this minhag, there's a stone from Aizo. Nearly the Sfar Mukhrach Hakel, I can even say this Lakula. Shabanu Bas Nizdav Dodor Bakila Cheret, he moved to another community. He said, this is an important rule for me. I'm sorry this, this man left. If I move to a new community, I can adopt their minhagam lakula. So again, if my father was moved to Morocco in 1935, he, uh, this man came back. Okay, good. The, the Chabazir says, if you move, even Lakuli, you accept the Minhagim of your new community, because he says Minhagim are determined by the location. The Baisham kept their Minhagim in Baisham. If, uh, if you would move out of Baisham, then you could travel on Arab shops. Okay? You can, you can accept, you can, it works Lakula. It works Lakumra. It works Lakula. You can you can make you can make a distinction about this, but I, he thinks it's so. So if you're in a town where there's a minhug, that's been a Vaishan's example, you can't. Because the place is what determines the minhug. That's why B'nai Baishan had couldn't travel in Arab shops. And that's it. There's a Chiddush, this idea of minha, minaga makom. The makom determines it. The makom determines it. The makom determines it. And that's why Ma'ukva didn't have to keep the minhag of his father. That was a personal minhag, and it wasn't adopted by the entire community, and it's not a, it's not binding upon the son of Ma'ukva's Ma, Ma father could wait a whole day. Ma'ukva doesn't have to wait a whole day, but the people in Baishan are living in Baishan, and he tells a story. Okay? Nina Kavi Natalia, when I was a youngster, there was a whole thing, and I remember this, people would play cards, it was called Nittelnach, but also on cards. They played cards on Hanukkah, they spin the dreidel on Hanukkah, and they would, they would bet on it. They would bet on the spinning the dreidel. Hanukkah, it's not like Purim. Purim is a day of festivity. Hanukkah, we don't have a mitzvah of pseudo. Why are they playing these silly games on Hanukkah? Now, he didn't like, his father didn't like that. But he, he wanted to make the, the, the kind of not to do this. Well, also be other. But the community didn't support him. But to say, oh, if we can gamble on Hanukkah, we can gamble on more days. That would be changing the old minhag. You can't change the minhag as long as you're there. And then he gets like a sadder point. 
he lives with the, he was a rabbi in Vermaiza. And he mentioned earlier that a minhag, there were minhagim there from the Crusades about fasting. But there were wars in 17th century northern Germany, and the whole community was exiled. The whole community was exiled in Father Siva. So now there's no more place. So now that we're not in Vermeisa anymore, and we're all scattered, do we still have to fast? Because based on your idea, if you're not in the place, the minhag is terminated, the minhag ends. So all these people who are exiled from Vermeisa said, Maybe your old minhagim are nullified, and we'll move somewhere else. We'll adopt the new minhagim of where we moved to. He said, "Not so. Why not?" Because he said the exile may end. Because before they left Vermaiza, they hid all the sifrei Torah. They hid all their sifrei, all their clay kodesh. They hid all the pinkasea kahal. And I really hope that we'll come back to Vamaiza. So I don't think that the community has been destroyed. It's temporarily moved. So if you tempor- temporarily move, I anticipate everybody's going to move back. So when you move temporarily, you don't lose your minhagim. But if you move permanently, then you adopt the minhagim of where you move to. But he was hoping that they will eventually come back to Vamaiza. And that's it for Minhag. That's why we do what we do. Any questions? Thank you. So thank you for your time. I enjoyed learning thank with you. you. And I look forward to meeting again with you, the Lynette or an L when you all get back together again. Bye bye. Have thank a nice summer. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Shalom. Have a good bye. rest. Bye. Take care. Thank you.